Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to answer a subscriber's question because it is a common question, but it is a complicated answer to kind of grasp and explain and get to. Um, the question is, I've been told that if you don't go to top-ranked school, my chances of breaking into quant is slim to nil. What is your take on that? It depends. Unfortunately, that is the answer, but let me give you as much of the big picture as I can so you can figure this out here. One, um, I th started thinking about this in in like a pie chart kind of blobby area kind of thing. So when you say quant, what do you mean by quant? Quant dev, which I don't consider quants. Those are implementation optimization people within the quantitative finance communities. Um, then you have actual quants, which I consider, you know, quantitative model development and research side of that. And then you have traders, which is the business end of that. And then we have the fourth part, which no one talks about, which is the data engineering side, right? There's a whole team that actually does all this, but we, for some reason, don't consider them even in the quant space, but they work at the, they work at the, the same firms. Um, so you start to think about where you want to head and what you want to do, okay? Um, the reason I'm saying this is because every school has different strengths and weaknesses here. So take the Ivy Leagues, for example. There are Ivy League programs that have quant programs, and I don't consider them very good programs. I wouldn't recommend going there. Um, and again, that's top ranked based on the Ivy League ranking of U.S. rankings, right? And you could say, you know, these are Ivy League. Obviously, they're amazing schools. Uh, no, the academic rigor on some of them looks a little sketchy. The job placement doesn't look great. Um, yeah, I, that, that ranking's not great. So throw Ivy League U.S. rankings out the window. Um, the second's going to be looking at other sorts of rankings. There's QuantNet. There's Risk.Net. There's the fancy quant honorable mention. So shout out to, to my rankings. My rankings, again, aren't ranked numerically because of this issue and this problem, which is different programs have different strengths for different people. So a one program might be the number one choice for a candidate and the best fit possible, where another program might be absolutely awful. Um, so it depends, right? It depends what you want to do in that. So that's one piece of that. Um, the second piece is who are you as a person, right? And this is kind of what I'm getting at with the school selection as well. Um, uh, let's say, let's say you want to end up in, I don't know, quant, quant. So quantitative model development, quant research. Um, and you have some sort of schools and you rank them somehow. I don't know, based on, I don't know, pick your, pick your metrics. And you say, well, I, I can only get in, so I applied to all these schools. I can only get into school 11, 12, and 13 on the list. Should I go? Which I get this question a lot. And the answer is, it depends on what you want to do, and it depends how much risk you're willing to take to get to quant finance. Which is why I tell people, you got to really be dedicated to do this. So let me give you an example here. Go out, do your research, find the programs that you think are the absolute best. One way to do this is look at people on LinkedIn. If you don't have a LinkedIn, go get a LinkedIn. Uh, it's free. Sign up for LinkedIn, go in, look at these programs, and start looking to see where the grads are working at. There are programs that are placing grads at tech firms. They're not quants. I'm sorry, you're not a quant. Um, there are people placing them at consulting firms. There are people placing them at hedge funds and investment firms that are traditional finance firms or not quant funds. So, and even like in banks, like you're placing quants in small regional banks, like often they're not really doing that much quant either. So again, it, it's trying to figure out where's the placement with this, right? Um, but the other thing is doing the best with what you have. So you might end up saying I went to two generic state schools who have master's programs um, and they want me to go there. You know, if you are dedicated and you find the work really interesting and you really enjoy doing analytical quantitative math and stats, like math and stats is critical for the quant side, um, then you need, you, you're going to need to do it. Like that's what I ended up doing, right? I took a big gamble. I, my wife and I went and got master's, $160,000 in debt. Um, and then I, I figured it out, right? You're going to have to figure something out, right? The school, you should look at the curriculum, make sure it's adding value uh, in the educational courses and the topics covered. That guarantees you there's some sort of value behind the degree itself. It's not just a piece of paper with a school name on it. So again, is there a top list of programs that people recruit from? Of course, everyone's list is different. I know everybody wants me to release. I have a blacklist. Like I have a list of programs I will refuse to hire from. 
because I know how bad the programs are. Uh, the curriculum's not great. The quality of the student they tend to bring in is awful. And I try to give people the benefit of the doubt. But when you start to go through interviewing process, doing hundreds and hundreds of applications, um, often you need some sort of way to filter that. So that is something that can happen. Um, if it's a smaller no-name school, though, to be honest with you guys, I don't pre-filter them because I don't know enough about the program to say if it is good or bad. And so I will take more time uh, to kind of review it and think through it. Now, that being said, every practitioner has different preferences. So again, get back to that LinkedIn piece, figure out where they're placing them. If they're placing a bunch of people at specific firms, those jobs look interesting to you. Go to that program, right? It's probably going to get you a similar job to that placement there. So that's kind of that piece of that. Um, again, the top ranking thing though is it's challenging. Even when I have lists of programs that I love to hire from or don't like to hire from, I go and I talk to other people in the industry and they're like, oh, I love hiring from these programs. And I'm like, oh, that program's awful. Um, and they have great experiences with it. Maybe they train the, them better. Maybe they don't train them better here. So of course it helps going to a big name program. The career placement is the real big piece in a lot of these programs as well. Um, the academic rigor is what hiring managers typically seek. Um, so there are programs that are glorified MBAs that, you know, they relabel the MBA as a quant finance masters. Uh, it's an MBA. Um, I know that a lot of other people know that, but they, they don't say nothing about it because it's just too much headache to deal with and no one wants to argue and fight. Um, but at the end of the day, sometimes like if you have to take that position, like that's the only masters you can get to get your foot in the door, you're going to have to have that minimum master. So if you have to get what I would consider more of a fake um, quant finance masters, that's okay. Um, but just realize you're going to need to do a lot more of the career portions of it and you're going to have to fill in um your academic side by reading textbooks, which if you're on this channel and you're watching, you're already ahead of most people out there, to be honest with you. Um, I've had a lot of people thank me saying, hey, I went through the process. I've watched your videos on how to interview and you know, talk to you know, professionals and network. And you've recommended some great books. Um, you guys, getting you can build kind of your own sort of edge. They still require the master's and the PhD because I'm hoping you have taken um, some good mastery level courses, not undergrad level just done in a master's. Um, I hope you've taken some mastery courses there. Um, but yes, there is still a huge possibility to get into the quant space without a big name, fancy degree on the resume. It is just more challenging and more of a gamble here. Um, I had somebody recently, I get a lot of uh, requests these days because it's uh, acceptance season for a lot of the programs. They got accepted into an amazing program and it was like 90, 95,000 in tuition. Um, they got accepted into another program, which was good, but not great, but it was like 50,000 less. And so again, how do you make that decision? And that's kind of the decision you have to make, which is how much of the networking can you do on your own? Um, again, being close to New York City is worth a lot because it's easy to network and meet people. There are a ton of events going on, all the programs that open up to the students. Um, it is much cheaper for you to go and attend all these programs. Maybe it's cheaper for you to fly. I don't know. Uh, figure that part out. Um, but again, the big names help you. That's why people pay a lot of money for them. Um, a lot of the, I would say the best programs typically have industry practitioners teaching as well. So it gives you a little bit of an edge in the interview process because you know how to look at a problem and talk about it from an industry practitioner's perspective. Surprise, we don't use uh, Holes, John C. Holes' book for it or you know some other of those fancy books. Uh, those are typically overly simplified and we don't talk about those topics usually as simply. Uh, we want to get more into the nitty gritty details behind that, which is why a good master's or PhD program should come into play here. So uh, unfortunately, no, there's not an easy answer to this, but yes, you can get in the quant space without doing that. Um, there are different areas of the industry, which are, I guess, more sticky than others. Um, there's a lot of pretentious people in some different pockets, which I do not like. Um, I would argue they're not quants. Um, but often it's because, uh, you know, that's just the route they go through with the hiring process. That's what they're looking for. Uh, but if you focus on the skills and things that interest you within the job, there are tons of quant jobs that hire people from no name schools. Um, even when I hire PhDs, right, there are not really PhDs in quant finance. Stony Brook's got a great one. So if you're looking for a PhD in quant finance, shout out to Stony Brook. Um, but besides Stony Brook, there's not really PhDs. So I will go and look for math PhDs from random schools that'll apply. And I'm like, oh, this looks interesting. Like, let me talk to them about their research. And I hop on a call and we have a chat and I try to assess how good their skills are, how smart they are, um, how hard is it going to be to transition to the quant space here. Um, but again, the name means something, but 
you know, it's really going to be up to you given the choices you do have. Um, and then also how much work you want to put into that to make it better. So anyways, sorry for the long winded answer. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time. Thanks.